feels that Amber was getting mad over nothing. He was just being nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> beautiful peeps my name is Shar and welcome to Shar TV in today's video I will be doing a recap on love in paradise the Caribbean episode 4 I don't have any shout outs at all for pinned comments because the comment section ain't commenting on to Ariana and Sherlon. Today is Ariana's third day in Jamaica and she's having a good time but wants to make a plan. Now even though she knows what was discussed between her mother and Sherlon, she still asked him what was, you know, what did they talk about? He said, you know, all of the hard questions, what's the plan, you know, stuff like that. He told her he really doesn't have a plan. He's like, here we go again. She's bringing up, you know, about moving to America. And he's like, give me a break. Is this like a gang up on Sherlock vacation? He says that yes, they will need to talk about it, but Ariana's feeling that he's avoiding it. Sherlock says that he doesn't like to have hard conversations. Well, that's called being a grown up, Sherlock, and that things will need to be discussed, but between them and not between, you know, the mother. Look, personally, personally, I don't like to feel like I'm being boxed in, like. And then I'm not, and I'm not trying to box you in either, but I just don't think you're necessarily being realistic and considerate of like a lot of what I've sacrificed on my own already. What can I do about, about that though? We should talk to somebody, mm -hmm. start getting the process going. Sherlock feels that Ariana speaks about the K-1 visa like, you know, like it's nothing major. But for him, it is something major because he's not quite ready for marriage. Well, my dear, you should have thought about that before, you know, you knocked her up. And so should she have. Sherlock takes marriage very seriously because his parents got divorced when he was like 10 or 11. And it's like, Nobody took him or his brother's feelings into consideration. You know, they're always fighting and the parents didn't think about what it would do to them if they were to split up. So that's why he doesn't want to rush into things and have it resulting in something that's not good for his son. He just doesn't feel that they're on that level yet. The conversation is actually giving Ariana mixed feelings. You know, learning that Sherlon is not ready for marriage. She does understand what marriage means to him, but she feels that he shouldn't be disappointing the mother of his son. She then mentions to him how he would feel about talking to a visa specialist. Well, I, I have no problem with that. Just to kind of see, like, I don't know, like, what else really to do, because I don't feel like we, we really know too much about the process. I don't really know, other than what we've worked up on the internet quickly. Exactly, exactly. So, I'll let's do just it. see what they have to say. I'll do it for you, babe. Do it for us. He figures that maybe he'll get a, a visa, see where she lives, spend time with her and their son, and you know, maybe he won't want to come back. Sherlon does not want to be forced into anything. He doesn't want anybody to tell him what to do because that's only going to push him away. Ariana's just hanging out with her sister and she's trying to get a hold of Sherlon, but he's not answering his phone. So in the meantime, she's just filling in her sister on the conversation that she had with Sherlon. Her sister reiterates to her that, you know, you don't have a lot of time to have these conversations before the baby comes and this is like the last time that you're going to see him. The sister does agree that, you know, he shouldn't be forced into anything because that's only going to make him miserable. And if that's the case, he might as well just stay in Jamaica and the family will help out with the baby. Sherlock finally calls back and they head off to see the specialist. Sherlock feels that Ariana is sometimes oblivious to the fact that there's a global pandemic and she's just so wrapped up in this whole like K-1 visa marriage situation. I work in the tourist industry so like I've been totally broke. There, there's actually been a point where I didn't know if I'm gonna like have something to eat tomorrow because like there's just nothing. I need to make some money before I even thinking about moving to America. Sherlock says to Ariana that he was speaking to his friend that morning and his friend had said to him that 
you know, he lost his job, doesn't have money to pay for his electricity bill, so his electricity got cut off. And Sherlock is hoping that he can help him out with a bit of money. Ariana said, well, you need to be taking care of your family first. And Sherlock said, you always have to say something like that. And she said, well, because you don't do anything. Ooh, shots fired. She's not even paying any attention to what he's saying. She's just looking out the window. It's going in one ear and coming out the other. Now, Ariana is feeling frustrated because she understands that he wants to help out his friend. That's fine. But at the same time, he hasn't even contributed to anything. And she's the mother of his child. So that makes her nervous for the future. In fact, why is that like so hard for you to hear? I don't understand. Like you're trying to like hide from the truth sometimes. Come on, man. Yo, I feel like to get off this bus, man. I swear to God, I feel like to get off this bus. Oh God, relax. Fuck. Well, that's everything for that couple. Nothing much happened. It was kind of. Now on to Mark and Kay. It's Mark's fourth day being there and they're having a nice little workout session. He's having a great time with Kay, but feels like they still need to talk about things. But it's kind of hard to find the right time because they're always on the go. They're always doing something. After their little workout session, Kay gives Mark a little Spanish lesson. ¿Cómo te llamas? Uh, what did I do? ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? What is your name? Como te llamas? Oh, yeah. Como te llamas? Me llamo Mark. Donde vives? Uh, me vives. Where are you from? Uh, uh, casa. Eh? He then brings up that he wants to talk about her past, which she's been very quiet about. It's really hard for Kay to talk about serious things, as we all know. But one day, he wants to get married to her, so these are things that he wants to know. He says to her that he wants to know more about her divorce, and she's like, well, why? And he said, well, it's important for him to know about her past. She says that her ex-husband was, you know, her best friend, and he traveled a lot for work. He would never be there to go dancing with her, parties, and when he was around, he'd just be on the computer, watching soccer games, you know, drinking beer. So they weren't spending a lot of time with each other. So eventually, the relationship just started to fall apart, little by little. I was infiel, 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 infiel. Infidelity? Yeah. I be, I, I was. Was with other men? Yeah, and I feel good because other man paid attention yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. So, he saw messages. And he had his suspicions of her. Now, Kay felt like, well, if he knew all that and still continued with his ways, well, then that means that he didn't really love her. So at that point, they decided to end their relationship. She feels like infidelity goes both ways. It's not just one person's fault. And she feels like if someone was unfaithful to her, then maybe it's something that she did wrong or that that person just wanted to be with another woman. And she feels that, you know, it's not the end of the world because nobody's the property of Nobody. Mark said to Kate, do you feel that you'd ever get married again? And she said, well, you know, I never even thought about that because I didn't even feel like I'd get married a first time. Now Mark loves Kay, but he wants him to have a monogamous relationship and he's just a little, he's, he's afraid that the same thing is going to happen to him. And if she cheated on him, it's something that he wouldn't be able to handle and the relationship would just be over. It's Mark's fifth day now and he feels a little bit better after their chat. So he's going to teach Kay how to surf. And they're going to a place called Black Rock which is where he used to surf daily when he used to live in Bocas. Now Kay is a little bit scared because she's more of a land kind of person when doing activities, not so much a water person, but she's going to, you know, give it a try for Mark. Pero 
Michelomio. Moments like this is what Mark wants more of in California. And although Kay, you know, she doesn't like to talk about the future, they need to be on the same page if they want a relationship together. He then says to Kay, well, you know, I want you to move to California so that we don't have to be apart. He knows that if they continue to live separately, then then they're just going to be with, with other people. Mark then explains to her if she's with him, she's with him and he doesn't want her to be with other people. Kay asks him, well, what are the options? And he said, well, pretty much move to California or the relationship is over because the relationship is not going to work living in two different countries. The first thing that's coming to Kay's mind is like, what the? Because she's happy living there. She loves living there. And all of her, you know, her students are there as well. She doesn't know anybody in America. Kay does want to build with Mark, but it's not easy for her to leave the island. She feels that Mark doesn't understand and she needs to process things about California before making any decisions. And Mark knows that he's putting pressure on Kay, but he doesn't know what else to do. Distance sucks and he doesn't think that it will work out for them. I think at the end of this trip, let's decide if we want to be together. I don't like the ultimatums. If I will go to California, it's because I want to go to California. No, because you gave me the ultimatum. No termina de cerrarme. Now, Mark isn't looking for an answer right this minute, but at some point, he's going to want one. Oh boy, that's going to be a tough one. I'm curious to see where that's going to go. That's everything for that couple. On to Amber and Daniel. Amber is feeling worried after Daniel mentioned that he wants his mother and brother to move with him to America. She also feels that this trip is not going according to plan because they just keep arguing. And now she's wondering where his priorities are. Daniel just wants to go to the club and have a good time because all they've been doing is fighting. Now, why do I feel that this is not going to end well? Amber is glad that Daniel invited David because she feels kind of bad after that whole dinner situation. So she hopes that they can just put it behind them. Amber just wants to dance and have a good time. Amber is hot from dancing, so they decide to take a break and get some beer. Daniel goes up to the bar. Within two seconds of Daniel walking up to the bar, some girl comes over and she's all chatting it up. Like, he shouldn't be talking to another girl. That pisses me off. How dare you? Y'all know her? Now Amber had an ex-boyfriend basically cheat right in front of her eyes. But she was so blinded because she was so loyal and trusted him. And she always said that she will never let that happen again. She decides to interrupt the conversation between Daniel and this lovely lady. Now Daniel says, oh, I'm just, you know, meeting and chatting with a friend. A friend? But Daniel, didn't you just ask her what her name was? So if that's your friend, why are you asking her what her name is? Come on now. Daniel said to Amber, don't worry, we were, we were just chatting. And Amber's like, yeah, I saw that. Ooh, if, if looks could kill. The girl said her goodbyes. I guess she, she didn't want no part of that. Mm -mm, she was out. Daniel feels that Amber was getting mad over nothing. He was just being nice. Mm -hmm. He feels that Amber needs to learn how to trust him, especially, you know, because when he moves to America, he's going to meet people, of course, and she needs to understand that. I'm just saying it, it was pretty <laughs> Literally, we were just over there dancing two seconds ago, and you're going to go over there and start talking to another girl. Come on, Amber, you cannot no, realize that with Daniel, me. No, you, no, you come on, Daniel. Por eso es que yo te digo que disfruto mi soltería. No, no, after, after, you, after you tell me, that's why I didn't enjoy being alone. And I say sometimes I wish to be alone because perfect. you're yeah. so crazy, but this is stupid. Daniel says we're here because we're supposed to have a good time. And Amber feels like, you know, this is the trip of her finding things out. She feels like he's being disrespectful because here she is paying all of his bills and he's doing these things in front of her face. So what is he doing behind her back? 
that she doesn't know about. And at this point, she's starting to question everything. It's now a little bit uncomfortable at the table, especially since Amber told Daniel to F off. So she decides to just walk away and says to Daniel, have fun with your new girlfriend. Oh please, Amber, we know when y'all get home, you're gonna smash and make up and all is gonna be forgotten. That's everything to that couple. Wasn't too interesting, blah. On to the last couple, Stephen and Martine. Stephen planned a night for Martine to have dinner with his family. He's feeling disappointed because he feels that Martine didn't really support him while he was being grilled by her parents. And Martine is feeling hurt, disappointed, and embarrassed because she doesn't feel like Stephen was able to answer the questions about their future. And she's questioning, well, why is he bringing me around the family and his daughter when he doesn't even seem ready for the next step? Stephen's sister-in-law says to them, well, what does the future hold for you both? Y'all discussing living arrangements, how it can work out. I mean, you were over there and he does his thing here, but if he moves over there, what, what's he gonna do? Or if you he move here? I don't know. I think these conversations y'all need to have at this stage if y'all can get serious. Yeah. Stephen's sister-in-law feels like, you know, they're still in the honeymoon stage and feels that, you know, they need to sit down and figure out what's going to happen. And then she says to Martine, how do your parents feel about Stephen? To which Martine said, well, they're old fashioned and they do have some concerns when it comes to Stephen. More so, in regards to his job and being around all the women and being out at night. Steven's father says to Martine, why hasn't Steven met your parents? She explains, well, I've never introduced a man to my family. And so she was a bit afraid to do so with Steven. And she also told herself that she would only have the man that she's going to marry meet her family. The sister-in-law then says, well, is marriage on the table? Martine says somewhere down the line and that she does want to get married. And she wants Stephen to show her that same level of commitment. Your answer should be yes, I want to get married. Like they're asking me these questions and Stephen's sitting right there, but he's not saying anything. Talk to your family. Tell them that you've been playing games. I'm not getting on my knee to propose to you. Like they, they should be asking you these things. For me, you know, I'm not pushing anybody, but we relate to seriously love. Uh, beefing up the relationship. The conversation is making Stephen realize that they've been together for three years and three years is a long time to not have a plan. And that's why he's a little bit quiet because he wants to decide if him and Martine are gonna stay together or if they're just gonna call it quits. Martine is in the kitchen with Stephen's mother so now they can have, you know, a little private conversation. She says to the mother, can I trust Steven? Because she doesn't know what's going on when, you know, she's not there. So that's why she's asking the mother. The mother says that you have to trust him. And one thing that she's learned in her own marriage is that someone shouldn't have to tell you anything. As long as you have the relationship, you will know. In other words, you gonna feel something in your gut if you know something is up. Because most times that gut feeling it does not lie. Martine says, well, she's not asking for anyone to police him because he doesn't need all that. And then she decided to mention what happened a year ago. This is when the first year of our relationship, we kind of had like a little lapse in trust mm -hmm. um, on his part, which I think kind of damaged and it kind of made our relationship progress a lot slower than it should have because the trust had to be rebuilt. Okay. Yeah, so I always, I'm always a little worried in the back of my head that like, that could still be something that I would have to worry about. Martine says that she still loves him and is slowly trying to rebuild her trust for him. The mother is happy that Martine can see change and that she can trust him. And she did say to Martine that, you know, Stephen can't go ahead and introduce her to the family and then the next week go bring Sally to them to, to meet. Oh no, it's, it ain't gonna work like that. Martine is loving everything that Stephen's mother is saying, but there's still something that she's feeling she can't shake. Well, girl, all I can say is that if you're still having these weird feelings going on inside, I don't feel that you should be pushing Stephen for a ring because let's be real, that's not gonna solve your problems. You need to deal with those problems first, 
before even entertaining a ring and marriage. But hey, that's just how I feel. I don't know about how you guys feel. That's everything for that couple. And to this recap, my beautiful peeps, oh boy, again, I'm still seeing red flags, especially with Amber and Daniel. I don't feel it's gonna go very well. And Steven, he ain't ready to go down that road. So I'm curious to see how it's gonna pan out with all four couples. That's everything to this video. I hope that you enjoyed. Thanks for watching my beautiful peeps and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.